Hello, this is Carl, also known as Zerabath and Custom Magic Community, and here today with another custom standard video. This one is about sideboarding. So um, we have this upcoming tournament in custom standard. All of the main board decks have been submitted, but we get a chance now to build our sideboards based on what is in the tournament meta. Um, and I was thinking about that, I was looking at my options, and I thought it might be a good idea to do a short slash quick slash brief video on the various sideboard options that exist in custom standard. For the purposes of this video, it will not be specific to the tournament and the decks that I expect to see there, although I will likely mention them because they're on my mind. Um, but these are all potential sideboard cards for the whole season, so from now till the end of the year. Um, and I've split them up by color and I've made little deck lists and stuff. I'm just gonna run through them, you know, as as always, like this is highly subjective. It depends on what deck you're using. It depends on what decks you're facing. A lot of times you don't want to just slot in answers to what your opponent's doing, but you want a more proactive sideboard plan, or maybe it's even incorrect to sideboard at all, depending on the matchup. So all that being said, here's just a bunch of different options, some things to think about. Um, so first up is Angel of Dismay. I've never cited this myself, but if you're against an aggro deck, this will immediately weaken their whole field as long as you catch them tapped. And then they will have a harder time attacking, attacking back against you. So potential uh, for go-wide decks uh, that have been attacking you. Calming Drummerix, this is one that has seen play before, mostly because it stops you know, all of the ETBs from blink-heavy decks or flicker decks or combos that involve you know, re repeatable ETBs. Cat Scratch Broker. Um, there's a lot of different ways to remove enchantments in white. I like this one because you're still putting board presence uh, down with the card along with removing the enchantment. The issue is if they have multiple enchantments, like with Harmonize together, they've got a whole bunch of different enchantments out there, and they will not sacrifice the one that you want them to most of the time. Um, so a little drawback there, but I think good if they've got like a single O-ring that they've used, or if they just have you know, uh, protect the uh, farm or, or something. Chosen of the Faultless, this might be a horrible idea, but it, it's similar to Angel of Dismay, except it comes down turn three and it repeats. Like, you know, if they attack you, then they're gonna have to expect to get a counter on that thing later. Um, and if you are being proactive yourself, you can sometimes use its other trigger to tap your opponent's creatures to let, let you go in. Containment Priest prevents creatures from being cheated in, so very important against Crest the Waters decks, or um, Reanimator decks, or um, Respect decks, or just all, all the decks that kind of cheat creatures into play for, for these explosive plays. Um, Ferratia's Collector, it gives you a pedal if they have more lands than you, so you really only want to play this if you're second, hence it's a sideboard card. But being able to have a 2-1 for 2 first strike that also gives you a pedal is, is quite good. Uh, Guardian Tanifa is, it gives you hexproof till end of turn. Um, I'm not exactly sure when you want to use this. If there's a combo deck that wins by dealing all of its damage to your face in one big blow on one turn after they've stormed through their whole deck, this would be a great include against such a deck. Uh, I may or may not have built a deck like that. Uh, Henry River City's Mayor, I've talked about in previous videos. This is just a wonderful uh, frustration for so many decks that care about non-creature spells or want to counter your threats. So very good if you're in green-white. Rejoicing Aristocrats, um, it's a 4-mana 3-1 that hits any artifact or enchantment when it enters play. And if you already have other Harmony stuff, then it can do other things as well. And you can repeat this trigger with your other Harmonize cards. River City's official is a hate bearer for non-basic lands and artifacts to make those enter tapped. This might be tempting against like a four-color deck where all of its stuff is uh, non-basic lands, but they're the non-basic lands that enter untapped. Uh, this would halt that a little bit, maybe slow them down. Runic Sealer is a fantastic creature. You get to name uh, the spell and it just can't be cast. So if you've got an aggro deck that keeps getting board wiped by the same board wipe in a matchup, you can name that. They can't ever cast it. Um, it can also double as a, um, uh, what do you mean to call it? Pithing Needle against something like, um, 
you know, amaret. They can't activate any of their amaret's abilities um, or cast new ones. So really cool, flexible sideboard slot in white. This one is a 2-1 flyer for two, so pretty good. Uh, but you have to sack it to get a one-time instance of its uh, ability there, a lot like Containment Priest, but a one-shot. Solo Officer, 2-2 two, two for two for Strike Vigilance, but it, it kind of does the same thing, except it doesn't prevent them from entering play, it just makes them enter play as 2-2s, two which sometimes accomplishes what you want anyway, and then it can brawl with it easily because it's a 2-2 two, two for Strike Vigilance. Tithe Official, really good against board wipes, um, bigger planeswalkers, big expensive non-creature spells, and Tomb Keeper, really good against mid-range decks or decks that have big creatures that your aggro deck's having a hard time um, attacking into. Then Via Arbiter of Perfection, similar to Angel of Dismay, like more expensive creature, but it has, you know, it has kind of an immediate effect on their next combat you can tap and hurt one of their creatures and their creatures can't attack you with haste so against the red deck that has um tries to put out those hasty uh, antarachi apex swamp dragons maybe this would be good against that i don't know the thing is this is expensive same with angel of dismay i think a lot of times when you go through the work of building a sideboard and having that card enter into your deck you don't want to you want to feel like you're getting a really good rate for it, that you're kind of making a game-winning play when, when you play it. Um, and if it's too slow of a play, that it maybe doesn't help you as much as you would want. Uh, contain Mutation. So Custom Core 2020 has this five-card cycle of hate cards for specific colors instead of hating enemy colors. It hates the allies of white, so it hates green or blue, and it's an O-ring uh, for creatures or planeswalkers, but it has to be green or blue, and this has flash, notably. So uh, possibly good, depending on what you're facing. Justicar Sentence is just kind of staple removal for any non-land permanent with CMC 3 or less. It doesn't hit anything 4 or above, so you can't hit, like, uh, Soul of New Alores, the, you know, the vehicle that Harmonize Together combos off with. You can't hit Amaret. There's some important things it doesn't hit. Um, and then later you can turn it to an angel if you, you want to win with it or find a creature out of nowhere. This is instant speed, notably. Uh, Seal of Judgment, just another O-ring, a little more expensive, but it gains you some life. Uh, Serve the Empire is the opposite. It's much cheaper. It can only hit creatures, only prevents them from attacking. But against aggro, being able to like use out of date and serve the Empire on the same turn can really help you stabilize until you find you know a board wipe. Stirring Pride is when you have your deck is attacking, but you're worried about your life total because of whatever they're doing. This goes a long way to helping you with that. Uh, taken for Questioning, just a typical O-ring with a color weight because sometimes if you have more life than them, you can cast it with Flash. Unfaltering Hope is an Anthem, which a lot of times I would argue should be main deck, but it also has this uh, ability to crack it to give your creatures indestructible until end of turn, uh, which can help against board wipes. Again, probably better as a main deck card. I don't know. Drillum's Guidance is similar. This is protection for your board. Um, if you've got kind of a smaller smaller board, power two or less on your creatures. Helen's Rebuff, similar. gives your creatures indestructible. You can also, you know, pay the tithe cost to make your creatures bigger. Imperial Claim is one I've put in a lot of my sideboards just as a catch-all. Um, if I'm worried about their artifacts or enchantments being indestructible or being recurred through various means. Exiling it is wonderful. The fact it gives them a treasure token is not always great, but the fact this is so cheap is, is really good, and it's such a catch-all. It uh, does a lot of work for a few slots in your sideboard. Nivea's Regret is interesting because it can attack a couple different things, so if you're worried about decks that have big things it's reanimating or cheating into play, and you're also worried about other decks that have artifacts, or sometimes both, uh, this can be good for that. Officer's Gambit. I'm not sure if this is a good sideboard card or not. I haven't convinced myself to try it, but the idea, I think, is against aggressive decks. You can make them sacrifice two creatures for one card. But a four mana, you want to be board wiping them anyway, so maybe that's not wonderful. Revel in Perfection. Good when you have lots of creatures, and they also have lots of creatures. You can blow them out in the middle of combat. Um, you can stop their attack and 
it, it's just very good. And note that it doesn't put counters on you, but it does put minus, minus, uh, minus one, minus one counters on their creatures. So even if you're not killing their stuff, you can make it weak as well, which is pretty good. Sonic Scream, again, the CMC three or less, so there's some things it doesn't hit, like Tradition, like Soul of No Lores, um, but it's cheap for the rate and it's instant speed. Vane's Choice also has the one-shot Containment Priest clause on it, in addition to giving you some tokens or giving one of your creatures indestructible, so good in certain matchups. Viral Fame, um, for matchups where you just need to remove their creature and you're okay with them getting it back into your hand and you're okay with them getting lots of life, but you want the cheap uh, mana cost. Uh, Wander the Unknown for when you want the same thing except you don't want them to ever get the creature back and you don't want them to gain the life and you're okay with paying one more mana. So anytime you have Viral Fame, probably better to just have Wander the Unknown. I don't know. Citywide Restructuring from when you just want to wipe the board completely clear. You don't want any dangling enchantments and artifacts and planeswalkers. You got to kill it all. And uh, very good for that. Cleansing Nova is similar. Uh, there's sometimes you want to kill all the creatures. Sometimes you're worried more about the ancillary stuff. And uh, I like that this gives you the option to choose between. Also, we don't have a lot of board wipes that just say destroy all creatures. Uh, Wrath of Mod, for example, another sideboard option, lets them upload a creature first. Um, so useful for that as well. Left to time, if they've got tons of enchantments, you can snipe as many as you wish. You know, one, two, or three. Pristine Daylight destroys them all, but maybe you don't want this if you have your own Oblivion Rings or uh, things like that. You're into the lion's dens and, and so on. Okay, that's white. Um, okay. Let's look at uh, blue. Okay, fewer here in blue. Amnesia laser, amnesia laser is technically a win condition. If you can get them to like have a medium hand, you can get them to like keep wheeling their hand until they're out of cards. And meanwhile, also use this to tap down their creatures and prevent their abilities. Uh, sign Mimic if you really want to copy something that they're doing or that you're doing for cheap. Um, block, uh, cheap blocker with eventual card advantage. If you're in a controlling deck and you're against a counterspell deck, being able to land a threat that they can't counter is good. Emissary of Dark Tides, you can bounce their attacking creatures or their spells. So think maybe in kind of a tempo-y deck or a flash deck, this could be good. And Sorcerer, I think, is an excellent mid-range blue card uh, for just stealing their crap. If they, they're being really aggressive against you, they've got a problematic creature, you can take their dragon or, you know, do what you got to do. Faceless Stalker, countering activated or triggered abilities. I have to admit, I don't know when there's an activated or triggered ability that's so problematic you, you really need this, like, one-time use to counter it. I, I just am not sure how often that happens. But we have the tool for it if somebody builds that deck. Uh, Kalipa Tide Surger can bounce not just creatures, but enchantments and artifacts. Sometimes that's important in blue if you don't have other ways to deal with enchantments and artifacts. And so that all being in one package, maybe you think this might be a, a sideboard card for some deck. Master Thief, you don't like their artifacts. You would like them instead. Uh, good for that. Mirage Oddity, this is pretty good control finisher if you're not in a meta that has lots of big flyers because um, they can't ever kill it. You can just keep exiling it till end of turn and returning it as long as you have lands that you can turn into wastes. Um, it, very frustrating. Like I've played against decks where I was way ahead, they landed Mirage Oddity, and I realized uh, I guess I just lose. I just can't ever remove it. A Night Hacker, if they're landing a, a lot of creatures... Um, or you want to stop an infinite creature combo where they make infinite tokens, um, this can do that. So like against, uh, whatchamacallit, Harmonize Together, I think this stops that as long as Night Hacker sticks around because any time that they make the tokens to, uh, to harmonize and make more tokens, to harmonize and make more tokens, they're losing life and you're gaining life the whole time. Um, and it is pseudo-removal when it enters play. They, they will have to replay the card that it uploads. Avian Assistance, just good card advantage and evasion for decks 
that want that. If you're against a controlling deck and you find that you peter out too much, this will help you, you know, get that card flow and maybe some evasion. Cryocell, just cheap blue removal for creature decks. Um, they will eventually be able to destroy it, so maybe not for a control deck. Render Inert is just very good instant speed blue removal. Uh, prevents their creatures from untapping. It also does some work against artifacts. Uh, and it also removes all the abilities of a creature, which is pretty good. I, maybe I need to put this in my control deck. Berry Dogma is the blue version of the Custom Core 2020 cycle. Uh, you can either, you know, it, it, this even works against spells that can't be countered, notably. So um, against Henry, who says can't be countered, and so I'm not countering it, I'm just putting it into your library a second from the top. And it also works on permanents that are white or black. So a lot of flexibility there. This works on artifacts, enchantments, um, planeswalkers, creatures, or spells. I think this is very good uh, sideboard tech. Confiscate evidence. If you're against a flash deck, I suppose, um, it'd be really cool if they try and flash something in or, or do some like big spell at the end of your turn. Say, no, I will exile that and I will do it instead. I do not think that this works for X spells. So if they do a big Epic of Echobram and you confiscate the evidence, I don't think you can recast Epic of Echobram for the same X value uh, for free. Um, oh, go back. Okay. Dissipate, we all know and love this card. Uh, if you need a counter spell to deal with things you'd rather not see in the graveyard. Essence Scatter, classic, something good to have in the format. I think Essence Scatter is actually very good for the meta currently, today, October 15th, 2020. Negate uh, for everything else. Then Oppress the Week, Blue-Black Removal, that if you have a Civilized deck can also draw you a card sometimes, but a lot of times it's just you know, Grasp of Darkness or whatever it's called is two mana minus four minus four. Perfect Crime. <clears throat> Good against tempo decks that want to counter your crap, but you want to exile their crap. Can also remove their uh, vehicles because it has instant speed. And it can also exile, it exiles all kinds of things. So very good three mana removal spell that cannot be stopped except by Berry Dogma. Sand Warp, I like this as a one of out of a sideboard when you have this big expensive play you really want to protect and you will not have the mana available to do so otherwise. Uh, you're only using this for the free mode in, in those cases, so if you want to play a full automation on turn six or citywide uh, redistrict, uh, citywide uh, restructuring, like something big, game winning or, or game stabilizing, and you're terrified of their counter spell. Being able to hold this up and, and actually cast it to preserve um, what you're trying to do is really useful. Also for combo decks. Sink into Doubt can't be countered, but can counter their stuff, but only if you have enough mana. This is kind of nice as like a Syncopate variant, although notably it doesn't exile stuff. Uh, it just helps you win counter wars. Spell Pierce, uh, classic, very good at dealing with their counter spells. Very good if you're an aggressive tempo deck against a control -y deck. Spell Sabotage, if you don't like their artifact spells or the artifacts that they have in play. Throw Off the Trail is very interesting. I was looking at it. Um, this can help you win those games where they're trying to mill you out. Like, I played a weird control matchup where... The Control Mirror matchup, where it turned out that both of our best ways to win the game were to use Epic of Echobram to make them draw their whole deck. Uh, being able to respond to something like that with this, make them draw instead or make them, you know, shuffle your graveyard into your library so that then, you know, you're okay with drawing all those cards because you will still have a library can be cool. Um, being able to change the target of a spell with a single target, also possibly good against combo decks or, you know, I was thinking about this, even if it's just something like Lightning Strike, right? You've got a 3-3, three, three, they've got a 3-3, three, three. they cast Lightning Strike, you pay three mana, to not only counter their spell, but to remove their 3-3. Three, three. You get a 2-for-1. Uh, this could potentially be game swinging in matchups where they're using a lot of removal uh, that would also be good against them. Unsummon, we know what Unsummon does. I'm not sure when it's the best, maybe in like Mono Blue Tempo 
mirror matches. Not not positive. Um, Zerat's choice card. Uh, the old activated ability counter from a non-land source. Not always positive exactly when that's a great idea. Oh, I do know. Activated ability. It says non-land, and I remember being like, ah, so we can't use this to counter the flip lands from Rakoa. But you could use Faceless Stalker to do that. So if you're worried about flip lands, maybe that's something Faceless Stalker can do. Because they have to sacrifice the land and then return it transformed. Well, if you counter the ability, they'll have already sacrificed the land and they'll have just lost a land. Anyway, it's a use for that. This is also potential counter spell and card selection. Ancestral Research I threw in here just because sometimes there's matchups where you just want to somehow get a bunch of card advantage, even if it's over a long period of time. But the actual spell you want to use to get that card advantage needs to be cheap, needs to happen early. Um, and Ancestral Research is good for that. Brain Jack is weird. It's highly dependent on what your opponent is doing. If you know their deck well enough and they have a permanent type or a card type that you would really love to play, this could do that. This seems really janky, but like something to consider, I guess. Uh, clean Slate. Destroy all lands, take an extra turn. I guess against ramp decks or decks that vomit out tons of lands. Removing all their lands and then getting an extra turn could be good. And there's other matchups, maybe control mirror matchups. You get slightly ahead and then you destroy everything. I don't know. Uh, or if you're a super friends deck and like you've got a bunch of permanents that will continue to accrue value even when you don't have mana. Getting lost is really good blue removal. It also gives you card advantage. It's tempo removal. It doesn't remove the thing. It just locks them down for a turn. Sarasa's acquisition is mind control of any permanent, so including lands, but you have to wait a turn. I feel like that's could be good in some kind of matchup, although I'm not sure exactly what. It did make me think maybe I need to make a land destruction deck that also has blue for Sarasa's acquisition to literally steal their lands and add them to your own. All right, and that's blue. Why, why does it keep saying that I'm saving things? That I'm changing it. All right, black. Um, from when you want to apply pressure and gain card advantage at the same time. Leyline Reaper, when you want to land a body and also remove theirs at the same time. Lurker on the walls. Um, you want an evasive threat that will accrue value over time. Morgue Manager, if they are searching their library all the time and you want them to fail, um, Morgue Manager is here for you. Vicious Cleaner. He is good at removing creature cards from graveyards, so specifically unearth creatures, uh, other creatures that, that give value from being in the yard. And yes, we put Bruiser when you want a body that can remove a thing, so similar to Leyline Reaper. Um, Boiling Outflow if you want a steady stream of bodies that can potentially give you card advantage. Consigned to Failure. This is a spicy one. If you're against a deck that doesn't run a lot of removal but runs a lot of threats and you're confident being able to win a very long game, um, I could see this being really good because if they have no way to remove their own creature, you uh, might just win the game from there. Uh, Curse of Bleeding deals two damage to them and then they can't gain life. So when you care about them and their life gain, Curse of Haunting, this is similar to... Uh, the mask, uh, the night hacker, if you're trying to stop uh, a combo that involves creatures entering, infinite creatures entering play. Into the lion's den, just when you're like, all right, I need to steal stuff from their hands in order to win this matchup. And you don't much care, you know. It, you'd rather be able to take anything you want. Lazare's altar is a very interesting card, has a fun sub game to it. Uh, highly controversial as to whether it's actually good or not. It can do so many things, but it helps your opponent every time. And there's arguments about the best times that you can break that synergy, and I will not argue about it here. I will just say for now, if you think you have a matchup that where you can break the symmetry well of Lazare's Altar, it might be a good sideboard card for you. Oracle's Ploy, 
one mana removal if you don't care so much about their ability to scry. Uh, like red decks are already really consistent, so them scrying maybe doesn't help them so much, but killing anything they play for one mana helps you quite a bit. Self-destruct sequence. If you want to clear the board of creatures and planeswalkers, and you're willing to wait, um, Fall of Athanas, when you want to kill the creatures, and you're not willing to wait. And then over time, you can, you know, it could potentially be a win condition as well. Tradition, this is if you want value over a long, over a long game, as well as gaining a little bit of life and some, some graveyard synergy. Notably, it combos with self destruct sequence if you want to. Um, use the self-destruct sequence every single turn. You can have it go off every single turn if you want with the fully active tradition. Air of Decay for killing lots of tokens at instant speed. Blood Knight Scorn. Um, this doesn't scale super well. Like a lot of times you just want to pay one, two, maybe three mana to kill something and you will have to pay much more mana to kill something with Blood Knight Scorn a lot of the time. But I think there are many matchups where you would be more than willing to pay all of your mana to gain the five or six life you need to stabilize past uh, their ability to, you know, draw Lightning Bolt off the top of their deck and get you. Not that we have Lightning Bolt in the format, because we don't, but you know what I mean. Disfigure, Cannon Card, very good. Also against aggro, being able to start removing stuff as early as the first turn is, is important, especially when you're on the play. And they have those Eternal Wanderers and whatnot. Uh, Eli's Choice can get you card advantage, can remove stuff, or destroy Planeswalkers. Lethal Dose. Uh, three mana exile a creature or a Planeswalker with CMC 4 or less. We are not seeing many creatures or Planeswalkers more expensive than that. So in many ways this is just, you know, an exile murder, which is very good. Misclick, if there's an upload deck that's getting out of hand, or a graveyard deck. This can deal with either. Um, or if you're about to be milled out, this can help you with that as well. Out of date, um, I think this. I think it's finally hit a spot where it's good in the meta. Who knows how that will change over the course of the season. But there's not a lot of artifact creatures out there, and there's not a lot of equipment decks out there, even though there are tools for such in uh, Custom Core 2020. Again, the meta can change, but this might be your Doomblade variant. If you're looking just for a regular old Doomblade to, to side in. Eli Windsor's really good at uh, piling up bullets and killing anything your opponents play. And then ticking up to an ultimate that will eventually win the game for you. Uh, however, it's really bad when you're on the play and they have any creatures before you play it. Because they can usually immediately remove it. Um, that's why I think it's a good sideboard option if you lose and then you're on the draw against an aggro deck. Playing this turn three against aggro can be very good. Sicknick, uh, like Into the Lion's Den, you can use it just to get stuff from their hand. There have also been some specific matchups where the plus one is very good. If you don't have a lot of expensive cards in your deck, but they do, like against Big Blue or something, um, you can just win the game by plus one-ing Sicknick for a long time. Banish, when there is that one creature, that one planeswalker, that just makes their deck so potent, and you would like to get rid of all of them. Uh, I think Banish is very good for that. Conspicuous Homicide, you want cheap removal, you don't care so much about whether they get the card advantage uh, from the interaction or not. So good tempo removal spell. Despise, Cannon Card, uh, being able to hit a creature or walker, much like Essence Scatter, I think this is very good right now, even main deckable. Duress is the opposite of that, just any non-creature, non-land card. Also hits walkers. Both of them hit walkers. Eli's Defiance also hits planeswalkers. You might notice a theme among these black sideboard options. Uh, but you can also make them sacrifice a non-legendary creature. Fugue's Quandary, I threw in here if you're an aggressive deck that needs card advantage. So similar to like Corporate Confidant, I guess but you're more burn focused and less on the board. Uh, this is uh, the, the black color shift of that red card whose name I forget. All right, more black board wipes. This uh, dealing, hitting everything for two at three mana is sometimes the sweet spot you wanna be in depending on the meta. And we have that option. Make prey, destroy a creature, an artifact or an enchantment for three mana. Nice flexibility, a good reason to be black green. 
memory hostage uh, when you really need to get a card out of their deck and, or their hand or graveyard or all of the above. But then they get to replace any that you took from their hand. Price, is, price of naivete is um, you can only remove blue or red cards, but they exile them and you gain some life. So I think it's actually quite good against mono red. If you can spend your first turn removing, um, you know, their one drop and they have no other one drops or their two drop and they have no other two drops um, or even just getting rid of a little bit of their redundancy but gaining a little bit of life at the time uh, is pretty good. As so The sooner you can start one for oneing aggro decks, the better. Supply Raid. This is an interesting hand attack card where you can choose any card. There's no restrictions, but the card, instead of being discarded, is journeyed, which means if they can deal combat damage to you at any time, they get that card back. It's a very fun card. I don't know if it's always the best. Like, the decks that will have a harder time um, getting the card back that that was journeyed would probably be equally as hurt by duress because you're not often hitting creatures. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure the best matchups for running Supply Raid. I don't know. Vibrant Rapture. This is a card that is well known in the meta because they have this really wide board and you do X for even one or two and you get a whole bunch of Lotus Petals back and you can then cast more stuff after wiping their board. That is backbreaking. I heartily recommend this as a sideboard tool against wide decks. All right. We're now going to look, red, green, and colorless are much smaller, I guess not much smaller, than uh, blue, black, and white. Bogborn Exorcist is an interesting one I haven't seen used very often. Uh, it doesn't give you card advantage, but it, you can turn one of the cards from your hand into an instant or sorcery from their graveyard and cast it for free, which, you know, sometimes can be good. Grin's Reaver... Um, for aggressive decks that need a way to build up card advantage against slower decks. Lab Wrecker, really good at destroying artifacts and non-basic lands. Uh, very powerful, very powerful creature that um, has seen a lot of play in the past. Marl Cruncher is kind of board wipe insurance, where if they kill all your stuff, at least you get a bunch of exiled cards that you have one turn to try and play. Vigilante Firebuck is anti-life uh, gain tech, but also if they try and cast spells from their graveyard or from exile. I don't know what else we have in the format that does that. I guess the undercover mechanic involves casting things from exile, so it, it does punish that. Embers of Prof... well, also like stuff like Grin's Reaver or Embers of Prophecy, you're casting stuff from exile then as well. So be aware of that. Embers of Prophecy... This is not an amazing card. It costs four mana, um, and you have to use a land to get the card each turn. But it does exist, and you can use it. Path of Brutality, this gets you two cards and double strike uh, if you're aggressive at all. A very good card to have. Flames of the Ideologue, the red version of that cycle. Um, two mana to deal five is pretty good. Um, I think... That kills Amaret, for example, except that this only hits black or green, and Amaret is many colors, but those colors are not black or green. Um, I guess this is good for hitting like a Sporeflow Protector that's gotten big, or an Amaravi's Disciple. I don't know. And it exiles it also, if that matters. Hard Crash is a shatter that also makes everything lose indestructible. So if you're worried about indestructible artifacts, you can do it. Notably, if you know, you're not as worried about their artifacts, but they have something else that's indestructible. This will also make that thing be indestructible if you have another way to remove it. This is a lightning bolt, but it costs you a card from your hand until you have the mana to get it back. Incandescent Rain, excellent board wipe. The fact it's instant speed matters a lot. The fact that it puts minus one, minus one counters matters a lot. So it's not just dealing two damage. It's effectively doing two damage, but all the stuff it doesn't kill, it's also weakening which can help you survive the turns you need to stabilize with something else, or it turns on your other removal, like your shocks. Um, yeah. Lightning Strike. We know how this works. 
Magma Mall, if you're a big red deck, maybe you already have this in your main deck. Um, otherwise, it's potential from the sideboard for the matchups where you want more removal. Rosalind's Choice, I like mostly for the second mode, where you can pay two mana to get two cards. Uh, notably, you'd have to play them before the end of your next turn. But also, you can use it to give one of your creatures haste if you're aggressive at all or make them attack you if you have some way to get an advantage from that. Shank. Um, I like this. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure how good this is, but I think it has potential. Paying one mana to deal one damage to something. I mean, that sees play in Custard right now because of all the, or in, in actual standard, because all the Lotus Cobra is going around. Uh, being able to also get a creature that has its own evasion at the same time, and this has flash. I, I just feel like there's potential here. Um, the question is if there's enough one toughness creatures you want to kill. There's Eternal Wanderer. There's uh, several one drops in red with one toughness. Um, Hunter Seeker. Yeah, I don't know. Something to consider, maybe. Shatter. Shock. Smelt. Sonic Wave. This one is good if you need to exile stuff. It's good if there's multiple things you want to exile. They each have one toughness. So the Unearth mechanic has brought several one drops that are in an, uh, a dedicated Unearth combo deck that if you can exile them instead of just killing them, that's really good for you. Toahanga Shifter Champion. Um, you know, just a solid Planeswalker. It can become a 4-4 with Indestructible and Haste. So like 4 mana for a 4-4 Indestructible Haste is pretty good. But the minus 3 of destroying permanence uh, is pretty good. You can destroy their lands with this, right? And potentially they will whiff. Potentially they'll hit something bigger than what you first killed, something more dangerous. So there's some risk there. Um, another red board wipe. This one is only Sorcery Speed. Does not have the bonus of minus 1, minus 1 counters but it is a little bit easier to cast, and uh, it also removes all of their weapon tokens, all of their lotus petal and treasure tokens, if that's something that you're concerned about. Blazing Offerings can kill creatures or walkers at a pretty good rate, two mana, four damage. Blazing Volley, one damage to each creature your opponents control, so even good if you've got things with one toughness. Uh, I've seen this used in aggressive decks just to give it one more attack step before they can use a board wipe. Of course, if it doesn't work, you lose, but a lot of times you're, you'll are you get the win if your board is built up well enough. Burning Sulfur, uh, good for removing their lands, particularly if they're a greedy mana base with not, with, without very many basic lands, and it cycles itself, so that's always good. Dereliction. It is uh, I guess it's a better smelt. No, no, smelt has instant speed. So, side grade. Um, sometimes you can go face with it, and that's nice, because that's something you can always do. I like when si uh, sideboard cards have multiple options like that, and one of them is something that you'll always be willing to do. This is a another board wipe that alternatively can give you um, a lot of power to your attack. I don't know what decks would both go wide enough to benefit from this, but also want a board wipe. But in case that deck exists, I have now talked about the card. Insistent Lightning uh, deals X damage to any target, so like a big old, you know, disintegration or whatever. But you can also cast it from your graveyard if you have no cards in your hand. So maybe in, in some kind of burn deck that wants some reach. Um, you know, if they know they're going to run out of cards after a while, and if their opponent is still around, once they build up enough lands, they can cast this from the yard and and finish them off. Kalanua's Wrath. I think this is one of the better Wraths in the format right now. Dealing 5 damage to everything on turn 5 is effectively a board wipe. Not always, mind you, but uh, often enough. And the fact that later in a game it can also give you your own 5-5, five five, uh, even potentially a 5-5 five five you can attack with immediately if you have 9 mana, is, is pretty good. Psionic Burst is an Arc Lightning variant. I I think that's often good in a format. I'm not sure if th there's something wrong with the uh, Secrets of the River Cities files right now, so I'm not sure if this card is actually what it says it is. It's Arc Lightning. Um, 
we know what arc lightning does it may not actually be in the format we'll, we'll find out uh, sand scald if it deals four damage to face or to a creature if they've got some beefy mid-range creatures that you need to get past like a uh, sire of empires or scion of empires whatever it's called uh, or some other creature that has indestructible for whatever reason this is good for that villain's gambit same issue with secrets of the river cities except i know that this one is what this says here where you exile the top x cards and you can either keep those to to play them on your next turn or um you can deal damage to any target equal to the those the number of those cards so this can be you know fireball or uh you know drawing a bunch of cards on impulse all right green and then colorless fox agency operator good if you need card advantage and you're attacking them a lot already fungal whomper if you want to stabilize and you're worried about them removing your stabilizing force jericho's assistant uh, good if you're aggressive and you're worried about them using spot removal on your creatures Jobaya, uh, good for ramping and creating uh, uh, its own threat for winning the game. Overgrowth Instigator, you don't want them removing your stuff or countering it, and this is a way for you to win against control. Plated Charger is kind of the same. Rateran Reclaimer, uh, as it attacks, you can destroy their artifacts and enchantments. Rat Eater... Uh, you can pay X and it enters with that many plus one plus one counters, but it also gains you X life. So a little bit of stabilization in a big mana deck. Here you can pay two mana and gain three life and have a one three body. Uh, for uh, This will get you some value over several turns. And if they kill it, you can discard cards to get it out of your yard. Sacrificial Bull exiles any card from a graveyard. And it gets a bonus if it's a land card. And then later you can turn that to life and cards of your own song mistress of the rivers if this is still how it is it has accomplice and anytime it becomes an accomplice you can destroy an artifact or enchantment which is pretty notable because you can repeat that and it itself doesn't have to do the attacking to become an accomplice spore flow protector excellent at removing cards from graveyards and you know a great top deck in a late game where both the graveyards are full you can just create a huge army of sapperlings 2-2 two, two that you can sacrifice to kill an artifact or enchantment. Not a wonderful rate, but it's a tool. Zero Beast Driver. Good if you're worried about them removing your strong creatures. Um, and you can also use it as a pump. The ability to pump it up bigger. Arcologize is kind of a catch-all. You can get their, their Planeswalkers, artifacts, enchantments, and turn them into forests. Um, Curse of Vulnerability if you're really worried about their Hexproof and Indestructible stuff. There's nothing in the format right now that I'm where I'm worried about Hexproof and Indestructible. But if there is, we have this tool. Gila Emergence gives you a 6-6 every turn, uh, and it can't be countered. So this is an excellent anti-control tool. Watch out for their instant speed removal, though. State of Affairs is just continuous life gain uh, and potentially getting a card back if you're willing to crack it and if you have the life advantage to do so worms wake um for really long games where you just want to accrue value from getting all hitting all of your land drops and eventually getting a, an enormous 15 15 with hexproof a bit of redemption kind of board wipe protection in a way like if they destroy all your stuff and you have the mana up you can get a bunch of them back to your hand and I'm sure there's other uses for it as well. Like with a self-destruct sequence, when it cracks and a bunch of stuff dies, you'll still have the mana on that turn to, to use Bitter Redemption. Cover up. Um, it's like naturalized, except it goes under their library. The final card in the five card cycle from Custom Core 2020. It's a fog that also gives your stuff hexproof from red and white till end of turn, as well as yourself. So a lot of potentially good uses there. I don't know which decks really want it, but it exists. Eli's Grit, um, it's pretty good. You can use your Planeswalkers to kill their Planeswalkers or creatures with it, which is a unique enough effect. I thought maybe I'd throw it in here. 
Heartland's protection can not only just give your creatures hexproof, like Ranger Skyle does, but any of your permanents. So if they're trying to destroy your land or your artifact or your enchantment or something like that. Lost in the past, um, there's various fogs and you know damage prevention effects, but this one uh, does not do so with card disadvantage because if you have any permanent in your graveyard, you also get that back when you do this as a fog, which I think goes a long way with fogs. Naturalize the classic card. Tohanga's Choice is really good. Um, you can use it as removal if you have creatures. You can help your creatures get too big to get removed by board wipes or by targeted removal, and you can destroy their enchantments. This is a fantastic card for green decks that use creatures. This is a fantastic um, enchantment and artifact removal. Anything CMC 4 or less, which is most of the important things for just one mana. The only drawback is sorcery and of course the CMC 4 or less, but uh, another excellent inclusion for many green sideboards. Creeping Corrosion, if you're worried about all their artifacts and you don't have many yourself. Epic of Jobaya. It can do a lot of different things. It can ramp you, but it can also be used to destroy multiple artifacts or enchantments, which, I, you know, for five mana, destroying two O-rings and getting a bunch of your stuff back is worth it. Then Strike Down, really niche use. If they've got flyers you're worried about, uh, like Antarachi Apex, you know, like some big, meaty flying dragons, being able to kill it with one mana and then do something else as well is pretty good. All right. Uh, let's do the last set of sideboard cards. Colorless. Not as many as I thought there would be. Breaker of Cities applies a lot of pressure against control decks that are relying on their board wipes or sorcery speed removal. Funerary Barge. Um, if you're in a deck where you're worried about board wipes, um, if they kill all your stuff and then your Funerary Barge is enormous, the next creature you play will let you attack with something huge and deadly. Hallowed Sanctum is good um, for preventing cheating from the library or the graveyard, and it prevents them from casting spells from both those zones as well. So it does a lot of work uh, against a variety of cheaty strategies. So it helps, helps people play more fair. Impenetrable Vault um, like common Dromerix, it prevents ETBs and those those flicker decks, uh, or those value ETB decks. And if it so happens that, you know, that game of your matchup, that's not really what they're doing anyway, you can sack it to get a card back. Lost Doll is interesting because it is uh, both a clue that you can sack for a card, but it's also a pithing needle um, for when, you know, you picked the wrong card name and you realize they're never going to play it. Well, you can at least get the card back. Paradise Gem, I don't know how great this is out of the sideboard, it depends on your deck, but it fixes your mana for one, though by the time you're at five mana, hopefully you've already fixed your mana pretty well. Uh, but most importantly, you gain life anytime you spend mana, which is really good. Uh, like, if you can survive the turn after you play this, you're going to usually be gaining six or seven life a turn uh, in addition to whatever else you want to be doing. A Cursed Bookworm, for when you know what's in their hand, and you know what's in their deck, um, this can suddenly become pretty good. A lot of randomness to this one, so not sure when I recommend it. Butler Droid, it, this is not the same card it used to be, but you gain two life at least when you play it, and another two when it trades with something, so it might be useful as like a road bump. Um... Eradicator Engine is interesting because in certain matchups, uh, it will just start destroying all of their crap. <laughs> like, uh, when it enters play and every time it attacks, you can just like destroy a lot of their stuff uh, and be pretty safe from it yourself uh, until all their stuff is gone. But at that point, it's done its job. So it accrues value in certain matchups immediately and then over time as well. Liminal Observer is more for when you need the value over time, and it may be a stabilizing 4-4 four, four body for 4. Stasis Enforcer is uh, good against decks that want to play multiple spells on each turn. 
So maybe that's mono blue tempo, although they use their mana in other ways as well, like equipping their rods and paying for their eternal wanderer triggers. But it's also good against stormy decks uh, if that's something you're worried about. Um, it also fixes your mana. So that's pretty good. Tempered Enkelim is an amazing card. Um, sometimes I feel like every deck should run four because it's that flexible and that impactful no matter what situation you're in and no matter what deck you are. I think you can see the benefits to this if you're in aggro or against aggro. Uh, Ancient Shelter is when you are a creature deck and they are a counterspell deck. This can save your bacon. Coral Barons. If you run enough basic lands and they have non-basic lands you want to destroy. Field of Ruin, when you want to destroy their non-basic lands and you don't care if they get a basic land back. Um, Rural Sinkhole, for you don't care which non-basic land they lose. Starved Oasis, for when you want a threat to win the game from your land uh, that they can't destroy on their own turn. Uh, same with stirring effigies, maybe if you care more about the potential life loss um, and, or you want more toughness on your your uh, man land. And then finally, Karn, Heart of Guilt. Is this really a sideboard card? Uh, maybe the decks that want to play Karn already have Karn in their main board, but this is kind of a sideboard effect. Uh, the minus four on Karn is bouncing every other non-land permanent. They can choose whether to put it on top or bottom of their library, of course, but it gets it off the battlefield, and uh, that's kind of a sideboardy effect. Anyway, that is many, many sideboard cards. It went a bit longer than I wanted it to. However, hopefully, while watching this video and thinking about your deck and the decks that you're worried about and that you're facing, you got some ideas of some things to put in your sideboard, either for this tournament that's happening you know, in these next few days, or if you're watching this video later, uh, just in your custard decks generally for this, this season. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope this was useful. Thank you for watching.